Thought the console war was over? Think again. Today on SVG News, we're looking at Xbox's latest offensive. And this Remedy employee's PS5 testimonial? It's truly, wait for it. Out of control! You're out of control! If you were a gamer back before the launch of the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, you might recall how one single video seemed to cement the fortunes of the two consoles. That clip, Sony's official PlayStation Use Game Instructional Video, painted the PS4 as easy to use and friendly to gamers while making the Xbox One and its digital rights management look unnecessary and complicated. Thanks. Fast forward to 2021, and both Sony and Microsoft have changed quite a bit in how they approach their consoles. Nowhere is that more apparent than with the next-gen upgrade for Marvel's Avengers, which is finally affording Microsoft the opportunity to exact some sweet, sweet revenge. For those out of the loop, upgrading your PlayStation 4 version of Avengers to the PlayStation 5 version is a bit cumbersome. You have to launch the PS4 version of the game, export your save file, then launch the PS5 version and import that save. Meanwhile, over on the Xbox side of things, the Xbox One version of the game automatically upgrades itself to the next-gen version thanks to smart delivery. There is no exporting and importing save data. Your game save just works after the upgrade. On Twitter, The Verge's Tom Warren summed the process up in a pretty succinct tweet. He wrote, How to migrate your save from Xbox One to Xbox Series X. Launch the game. That led Aaron Greenberg, the GM of Xbox Games Marketing at Microsoft, to share Warren's tweet in a way that was almost certainly meant to needle Sony. Greenberg wrote thanks in quotes, undoubtedly referencing the thanks that Adam Boyzen did Sony's PS4 video with all those years ago. Revenge is a dish best served. Chili. It's not the first time that Microsoft has fired back at Sony for that video. In October 2020, the Xbox UK Twitter account poked fun at the process for removing and reinstalling the PS5 stand. The tweet was eventually deleted, but it doesn't seem likely that Greenbergs will suffer that same fate. While the war between the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series XS is still in its early days, it seems as though Microsoft has notched a victory when it comes to the ease of upgrading last-gen games. Whether that translates into first-place gold when all is said and done, though, remains to be seen. Remedy Entertainment's Control Ultimate Edition has received a good deal of praise from critics, and it's easy to see why. Over the course of its runtime, there are exciting secrets to explore and plenty of additions to Remedy's connected universe to discover. However, getting the game to its current state was no easy feat for the development team. In a new episode of IGN's Next Gen Console Watch, Remedy Entertainment's Communications Director Thomas Puha explained the difficulties of making a game for multiple console generations. Along the way, he also told the panel why he felt one of the newest consoles was much easier to design for. Players have argued about which console company is better for years. This is all about committing to one machine. Right, let's all get PS4s. No, the Xboxes are gonna be better. They're not better, they're just more expensive. But it seems like developers may have their own ideas about the best system to use. Right from the get-go, Puhar admitted that, quote, it sucks trying to develop a game with cross-gen support in mind. For one thing, Puhar pointed out that any next-gen enhancements that are baked into a game are pretty limited by whatever design decisions were made while developing the previous gen version. Whatever you kind of bring to next-gen is still honestly pretty limited by the choices you made years ago. On the flip side, Puha mentioned that there were several enhancements made to the game that weren't even implemented by Remedy. For instance, the load times for Control's next-gen release were lauded by critics. But Puha admitted that this was simply a consequence of the game running on next-gen hardware. Even so, Remedy had a lot of work to do to get the game running correctly on next-gen consoles. The game's engine had to be reworked from the version of the game that shipped in 2019, and things like ray tracing were added in to give Control a true next-gen sheen. However, this process ended up being a bit of a slug when it came to optimizing Control for the new Xbox family of consoles. Puha said that he ultimately likes both the PS5 and the Xbox Series XS. However, as he explained to IGN, Sony seemed to be, quote, a bit more ready when it came to finalizing its software for the PS5. So Remedy was able to get right to work on bringing control to the PS5, Puha said. Sony kind of stuck to what worked, and, and they're sort of 
development software and tools were like pretty stable and good pretty early on. He added, Microsoft opted to change quite a lot of things, which in the long run are probably good. But of course, it was just a bigger hurdle for us devs early on because we had to rewrite a bunch of different things to take advantage of specific features. Puha also felt that developing games for the Xbox Series S may end up holding developers back at least when it comes to making games the best they can possibly be. As he explained it, games have to be designed with the system with the lowest specs in mind, which can limit studios in some ways. To drill this point home, Puha quipped, I don't envy folks making Halo Infinite. That being said, Puha expressed his excitement for the true next-gen games that Remedy has coming up, promising that fans would enjoy what the developer has in store. Control Ultimate Edition is available now.